Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath to all of you. Wonderful. Can you hear me? Good morning. All right. Wonderful. I hope that um, All right. Happy Sabbath. Okay. If um whoever's on, if you can just uh see if you can hear me. All right. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and praise you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath morning. Um, despite difficulties, we are here. We want to say thank you, Lord. I pray that you cover us under your wings and help us to trust you and do what is right in your sight. Be with everyone watching. Father, I pray that you, you know, um, may your Holy Spirit cover us, Lord, and help us to understand your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Um, good morning, Vanessa. Okay, wonderful. Hi. Uh, so you need okay great you guys can hear me um, I'm sorry we're a little bit late we had some technical difficulties this morning but by God's grace we are here so I have to preach this morning so I will only be here for a few minutes but we're gonna um, see you know whatever God can can help us um, you know do together a oh, happy Sabbath mr. Esper um, you know so we're going to um, steady the word of god all right we are on lesson nine and i thank you guys for um you know my daughter uh hadasha um you know did the lesson last week and thank you for um you know for your support of her and we're gonna see if we can do the lesson together more often so um you know coming down the pipeline okay wonderful the lesson this week is the rhythm of rest and our memory uh verse is from genesis 2 uh verse 3 that says then god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which god had created and made wow we are talking about the sabbath and a lot of um you know a lot of people are like oh the sabbath you know oh why 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 you know the um the sabbath is is um it's for the Jews. It's um, it's been abolished. But let me tell you um, that what God has created, um, you know, is not for the Jews because it preceded um, that because the Sabbath was created at creation. So we we praise God for that. But um, we as as it talks about, it says God set a marker as a living memory aid god wanted this day to be a time for us to stop and deliberately enjoy life a day so um to be and not do to celebrate the gift of grass air wildlife people and most of all the creator of every good gift so when god created um you know the the when the seventh day and blessed it and hallow it and sanctify it. Remember, creation had, um, you know, just happened. God just spent six days creating, and and which the sixth day was, you know, men and women. He created all the animals, and so God on the seventh day, you know, um, he rested. Why? Because for us to to rest and follow and be able to contemplate who God is, and uh, you know, when we are so busy you know, in life, you know, we're going through the whole week, um, you know, 24 hours is not even enough for us. And so as we go through the week, it's like, you know, do we really have time? You know, our bodies are going like uh, machinery. But you know what, as soon as Friday night comes, guys, my body just automatically is like, wow, it's, you know, it's it's shutting down me, meaning that it's it's time to take a break just imagine you have a car and it's going 24 7 does that what will happen to that car it will break and you know god is so awesome that you know he he thinks of you know of everything and this is why he created the seventh day that we might rest and reflect not on the created but you know on the creator and and just thanking him and praising him you know for who he is 
um you know it it talks about on on sunday's lesson it says what did god's evaluation indicate about creation and and genesis 1 verse um 1 to 31 it says at the end it says god saw everything was very good right and that he made and so he says okay we will rest okay and um one of the things it says in genesis 1 26 and 27 what did he say about man he says let us make man in our image and we also find that in genesis 2 um you know verse 7 and 21 to 24 you know what one of the things guys as i was reading um last night and it you know it clicked uh for me and in genesis 2 verse 18 because you know um genesis 1 gives us the creation and then in genesis 2 it gives us the breakdown of how creation happened and you know about men and women but you know as god when god created man and he saw in verse 18 it says he saw that adam needed a helpmate to help me and so you know he said it's not good for man to be alone and then um but he didn't create uh eve right away what did he do you know adam went through and gave um all the animals names and things like that and then what happened after that then adam realized that wait a minute everyone has a partner except me and so then God put him into a deep sleep. So Adam realized the need for, you know, for a helpmate, for somebody. And God also wants us to realize the need for him in our lives. You know, it's like, yes, I know I need God, but, you know, do you really need him? And do you really want him you know so this is this is what came out um to me god already knew what adam needed but at the right time he gave it to to adam and um and so i i was like wow that's interesting so god always knows what's best he is alpha and omega he knows the beginning um and the end and he will always do what is best for you and me amen and um you know god uh bent down and breathed into adam's nostrils right and there was a living being eve's special creation from adam's rib added another important element to creation week marriage was part of god's design for humanity a sacred trust of partnership between ish and isha men and women Two institutions created um, before sin, and it's marriage and the Sabbath. And you know what? A lot of people, um, even I've heard some pastors say, oh, you know, a uh, relation between men and women was, you know, was after sin. No, it was not. It was before and so god you know create so you know so what god uh, created uh you know our sexual organs after sin no god created it when he created us as humans and so and um you know for those of you who followed um you know i preached last night about you know the relationship between a man and a woman god created that that you and i can can um can experience love you know the love that he has for us but tangible love and this is why the enemy always tries to enter um you know between um, a man and a woman and totally destroy that because he it's like what god created is not is not good you know and the same thing with this with the holy sabbath it's like what god created is no good so we need a substitute day no you can not the sabbath but you know on sunday you know or you can worship any day god is very specific he created men and women and he created our sexual organs that we might enjoy and this is like um you know and i say it all the time when we a man and he says they shall become one just like when we take christ as our personal savior we enter into a personal relationship with christ we become one with god amen and so 
It's the same thing with the Sabbath. God created the Sabbath as a sign between him and us that, you know what, this is what I want for you. And I want you to spend time on, you know, on the on the um, Sabbath day and worship me and enjoy my creation, what I've created. Uh, you know, he doesn't want us to worship the created, but he wants us to worship the creator, you know, th um, the one that created everything so you know this is why the enemy constantly tries to get in and um and destroy our trust in god uh you know oh you know like some people say oh no the sabbath is wednesday the sabbath is sunday who you know god is very specific the sabbath is the seventh day of the week and and this is what he created six day and on the seventh he rested so we praise god for that um and on you know, I we're rushing a little bit, um, but we'll you know we'll just go through the essentials. It says um, the command to rest. God wants us to rest, guys, and I've seen it. I am like, I I realize in my own life I'm running 24/7. You know, I'm working. I'm I'm um, you know helping with the ministry, but guess what? You know, um, is that healthy all the time? No, it's not. And this is why God says, you know, come come away come and rest and th this is why i believe this lesson study is so amazing because god really wants us to take rest um seriously and if you don't have time any other day at least on the sabbath day you know let's take a rest let's reflect on god's goodness let's reflect on god's love for us and rejuvenate um, you know, let's spend time in the word reading and, and asking God, you know, what do you want for my life? And, um, you know, how can I serve you more and more, Lord? This is what God is it wants, you know, from us to really commune with us one on one. And in Genesis 2, 3 says, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had, had created and made amen um you know it's like uh you know adam and eve he wanted them to stop you know their day-to-day -day activities of taking care of the animals taking care of the gardens right and rest side by side with their creator and really spending time with them reflecting on god's greatness and goodness and it's the same for us today uh you know he wants us to do that you know um let's um i'm just going through some of the um highlights okay um now in exodus 20 8 to 11 um it says you know what what does this teach us about the importance of the sabbath as it relates to creation it says with this command god calls us to remember our origins contrary to what so many believe we are not the chance products of cold on caring and blind forces and and in exodus it says remember the sabbath day so if you're remembering something that means it wasn't just given to you it was done before and so yes the sabbath was done at creation but what had happened to the children of israel you know they were in slavery and when you are enslaved what happened you don't know there's no days for you you work seven days a week whatever your master says that's what you do and so that's exactly what was happening with the children of Israel. So God told them, remember my Sabbath day. I, you know, I want you to spend time with me. Now, besides that, how do we know that it was done before and that they were observing the Sabbath? Look, when, um, when they were in, um, you know, in the desert, when they just got freed from slavery, what was happening in the desert? God provided for them the manna every morning. And he said, you shall collect this for six days. Okay. Every day I will give you just enough for, for the day. And were some of the children um, obedient? Some of them were like doing whatever they wanted. Right. And, um, but you know, the Lord was like, okay, whoever picked more than they, than they needed on the, the next day, by the next morning, it stunk and it had worms in it. But God, it was very specific. He says on the preparation day or on Friday, make sure that you get double portion. And then he's, you know, to, because on Saturday I will not do it. I will also rest from that, but I will keep it fresh and good. And did God keep his promise? Yes, he did. On the Sabbath, they came, picked, 
to pick some still disobeyed came to pick uh, mana and there was none on the floor but the ones that had picked a uh, double portion on friday they had enough to last them for the sabbath where they didn't have to go get more and god started again on the first day on sunday and so you know the lord gave the sabbath not you know um you know at sinai but way before because it was during creation amen for that now um this um now one of the things it talks about is this new generation uh that was um you know that was in the desert uh moses took them again and deuteronomy 5 and says okay guys um i know you know you guys have gone through the desert and you know and things like that but i want you to remember god's laws again and he told them you know observe the the seventh day sabbath um because this is a sign between god and us and guys guess what it's gonna come down to that where it's going to be you know what are you observing the sabbath day of the lord or you know just like um you know we know that pope constantine changed the sabbath from saturday to the first day of the week you know and why because he says well that's the day that jesus rose but there is nowhere in the bible where um you know sunday um is chosen as the sabbath day so this was man-made and and daniel what did it say it told us in in the book of daniel that you know authorities will change times and days you know um you know so this is exactly what happened you know um the the pope pope constantly said okay we're changing it and so guess what everybody um does it because that's the day that we know but what does god say god says on his holy sabbath and he tells us what his what day is his holy sabbath on it is on the seventh day which is saturday uh you know so very specific you know for you know um for that now in exodus 20 verse 8 again it says the commandment began with the word remember but in deuteronomy 5 and 12 because all these children that were born in the desert or left egypt that you know didn't really know um you know it's just like a lot of us who are immigrants here some of us we know the culture because of our parents but we don't um you know we don't remember everything but it's the same thing that happened to them and in deuteronomy 5 12 um begins with the word observe uh so remember and um and uh exodus and observe and deuteronomy which means that they've been doing it but remember to keep doing it and where where god is about to bless you where he is about to take you you and i need to keep um, you know the sabbath holy god sabbath not my sabbath but god sabbath holy now um you know it talks about um the sabbath commandment was to remind them that the same god who was active in the creation story hallelujah right also was active in their deliverance okay the lord your god brought you out from there with a strong hand and outstretched arm and um and deuteronomy 5 verse 15 so we and we should understand that you know what god was saying right there that you know for us to remember this is he is god and we need to worship him all right um and on um on thursday's lesson keeping the sabbath it says um god commands his people to keep the sabbath day okay right along with not murdering and not stealing okay is the command to remember the sabbath even though the bible doesn't give us specifics or on exactly how we are to keep it uh now one of the things that you know we we know is very popular is you know they said the laws were abolished at the cross which law was abolished at the cross um is it all the ten commandments or just the sabbath okay so uh, this is a question that i need to ask so if all the laws were abolished at the cross so that means that i can go and kill you and nothing will happen to me or i can lie or do fraud or 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 slander you and and you know and be envious hmm uh, so are these laws abolished 
most of law most of the laws all over the world you know like the the regular laws were made from the ten commandments right thou shall not kill so if you kill you will be punished you shall not lie or commit fraud this is what happened uh you know if you do that so which laws were abolished at the cross all the laws or just the sabbath none of them the laws you know jesus says i did not come to destroy the law but you know to fulfill the law you know it's it's like you know uh, and a lot of times we take that um and oh and just like you know and the bible jesus says you know they said which is uh, the most important commandment jesus says love your god with all your might right um and love your neighbor as yourself now which ones are these we know that the first four commandments are all about god and loving god you know and then the the um the other six the other six commandments are all about our neighbor so this is what it is it's it's all about so we need to be very careful as you know we are repeating because of one commandment that we don't want to follow we said all the laws were abolished if all the laws were abolished that means we can we we have free reign we can go around and do whatever we want and there's nothing that will stop us no um you know the laws of god are eternal and this is why god wrote the laws the ten commandments with his own finger he didn't have anybody do it for him and he wrote them on stone which will last forever they're eternal and he put them in the in the um you know uh the um the ark of the covenant and right now it you know and also you know the psalmist says you know lord write your words in my heart that i might not sin against you remember um for some of you don't know but you know the 10 commandments maybe i will do it in english one of these days but it's a it's a love letter from god to you and me and and the 10 commandments are there why because he wants us to um you know to to follow him and he has put this you know it's for our good it's not for god's good it's for our good you know um do not kill do not you know do not commit adultery because when you are adulterous it's again um you know you're hurting yourself you're hurting your family you're hurting other people just like when we commit spiritual adultery with god you know when we're worshiping other gods and we're you know um not paying attention to the lord again that spiritual adultery so you know god has written you and i a love letter and this is what the ten commandments are guys it's really a love letter that says you know i it's not like oh i don't want you to do this no i this is what i want you to do because i want you to live a long life i want you to prosper in all things that you do so all the ten commandments it's it's really a love letter to you and me um, you know, when it says honor your parents that you may live long and, and where I'm going to take you, you know, or, or, you know, or right now. And, you know, some of you are, are young where I'm go, you know, I'm going to prosper you, but you need to honor your parents. You cannot disrespect them. I know they're, you know, like we take, um, you know, the roles get reversed because what, you know, as we get older, we turn, um, you know, our children almost has command over us, but what kind of command are you having over your parents? Are you mistreated? them are you using them you know again all of that is very important so god placed the ten commandments that we might um you know prosper in all things and um you know and to bless us and so um and you know again it's in the lesson in leviticus 19 verse 3 you know that's the um you know uh you know what important aspect of sabbath keeping does Levit leviticus 19 verse 3 highlight it says you must respect your mother and father and you must observe my sabbaths amen um so it talks about first sabbath was the culmination of the creation week right so we should remember the sabbath day all week and plan ahead so that we can set aside our weekly work and thus keep it holy when the sabbath comes intentionally preparing during the week and especially on the preparation day and this is found in mark 15 verse 42 so how do we keep the sabbath guys this is um you know like i said the bible you know it's it says in in isaiah 58 30 it says you know do not do your pleasure but do what is pleasing to god and so um that's something that 
you know it means different things to different people some people you know just like we don't want to be legalistic it's like you know so the sabbath becomes like a burden uh you know you it's like it's a do this do that or don't do you know it's do not do this do not do that no it needs to be pleasure you know like uh, uh you know what what will please god you know and so you know, each of us need to ask, um, you know, it's, and the Bible gives us a guideline. It says, do not do your pleasure, but what pleases the Lord. So what does God love? God loves to be praised. God, and he, it says, you know, what did Jesus do on the Sabbath? He went to the tabernacle and taught, um, you know, on the Sabbath. And what else did he do? He healed the sick. He visited, you know, he, he did a lot of healing on the Sabbath. And so, um, you know, we need to be careful. Like some people will not touch this, will not touch that. And, and it becomes a burden. It needs to be pleasure. And the Sabbath is a feast of the lord so we need to enjoy the sabbath day maybe go f into nature and and have nature walks and you know see god's cre um, creation you know my dad as a young child in haiti i remember used to take us on uh, you know after we came home from church and we had sabbath lunch he used to take us to the mountains and walk with us and you know just um show us uh, you know how great God is and look how what he created and we, you know we used to watch the animals and do all of that so you know we really need to take time to enjoy you know the God's creation and so you know that we don't turn the Sabbath into a burden or it's like you know a list of do's and don'ts but what can I do to please my God you know if it's spending quiet time in your bedroom and the Word of God amen if you, you know, going on a nature walk, going, um, you know, kayaking, uh, you know, just enjoying uh, God's work. You know, again, what is pleasing to God and to you, whatever will enhance your relationship with God. So the Sabbath needs to be um, a wonder, a feast. You know, it's like some people like, and, uh, you know, the Sabbath is not really for fasting. You know, it's for, it's a feast. God, um, in, in Leviticus 23, it says that's one of the feasts. So this feast comes every seven days. It's a feast. So we need to eat well. We need to fellowship with family and friends. And, you know, and this is what it's all about and, and talking about how good God has been to you and me. So as we, um, as we go through, um, I want um, us to, to understand that, um, you know, that the Sabbath is a delight and it should be not a burden. I know for young people, it's like, oh, you know, um, Sabbath to Sabbath. And it's like, well, I can't wait for it to end. You know, guess what? I used to be the same way, but now it's like, oh, it's going by too fast. I want to spend more time with God, maybe take a nap that I never get a chance to do, but, you know, just, um, spending time with family and friends and, you know, fellowshipping and worshiping our creator. That's what it really should be. So if we're not doing that, maybe we should start, you know, and, um, you know, just change our mindset about what the Sabbath is. And, you know, it's God wants us to be thankful about all he's done for us. And this is what the Sabbath is all about. Amen. And it says, um, you know, in conclusion, it says one of the important reasons why the Lord delivered Israel from slavery in Egypt was that they might keep his holy Sabbath. Evidently, Moses and Aaron, right, renewed the teaching about the holiness of the Sabbath because Pharaoh complained to them, ye make the people rest from their burdens, Exodus 5 verse 5. This would indicate that Moses and Aaron began a Sabbath reform in Egypt. And so, you know, because the people were in bondage for over 400 years. So they, you know, it's like, oh, forget it. You know, it's like life is is just, you know, um, you know, it, it's just slavery. But, you know, right now, can we start a reform in our own lives and your personal lives with with, um, you know, with your family, with your church, you know, um, instead of, you know, doing what is pleasing to you all the time? What can I do to please God and you? You know, again, remember, you're in a relationship. So what, um, you know, what can make you happy and what makes God happy? And, you know, this is what it's all about, guys. It, you, you are in a covenant relationship with your God. And so, um, you know, ask God, what would, what would you like me to do to, to, to make you happy 
God and he will let you know he will and if he's not he will also let you know so you know God is a personal God and he wants to talk to each of us individually um you know this is why Jesus came to die for you and me on the cross that we can have eternal life and he wants that relationship with you and me and so as we um as we go through um happy sabbath to all of you um you know i you know everyone that's been saying happy sabbath to me uh, um you know happy sabbath i see sheila and shirley um you know edith merlin um you know uh anatasia um you know mr charles Esper, um, you know, all of us, need and, uh, you know, Vanessa, all of you, I want to say happy Sabbath to all of you. And I wish you a wonderful Sabbath day. May God bless you and may he watch over you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and praise you for who you are. Thank you for your holy Sabbath, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to a chance to spend time with your children, Lord, and with each other, Lord, on your holy Sabbath day. Help us to understand that, you know, the Sabbath is not a burden, but a gift of love, a love letter, Lord, that you want us to rest because you care about us, not because you want to nag us, but because you want us to rest mentally, physically, that you can renew us, um, that you can renew our strength, that you can bless us lord you know um that we can be rejuvenated to start our week so we thank you lord for for this wonderful day help us lord to accept um your love and this day of rest that you have blessed us with we thank you and praise you bless everyone that is watching watch over them keep them lord keep us all connected to you we thank you and praise you in jesus name i pray amen have a wonderful sabbath afternoon and I will be preaching at end time, so I'm going to run. And um, so I will see you, um, you know, there, um, you know, this morning. All right. Thank you. Love you.